So I actually packed a little car, I had a two-door car, I drove out to Southern California and I started college. So that's where I went to college out there, I met my wife, my wife was in the back, Jennifer Walker back there. So she's a substitute teacher here in, in Farragut. And I, um, her and I have been together for over 23 years now. And we have two wonderful kids. My oldest son, he, or my oldest son, I should say, is at Southern Utah University. He is a pres president of his fraternity, so we're very proud of him. My daughter is at uh, Virginia Tech. And she's in the Corps of Cadets, so when she graduates, upon graduation, she'll go, she'll commission as an officer in the United States Navy. Woo! <laughs> On another note, we found out this week, a couple days ago, she was actually being cadet of the semester, too. So we're very happy about that. So we are very, very proud of both of our kids, as all parents are, but we are blessed that they are having successes in place. So we're very happy for that. After graduating college, I was working at Papa John's Pizza, which you know, we didn't have a whole lot of money, but we always had food to eat, so that was the benefit of working there. Uh, in 2001, I started off as an insurance agent with Farmers Insurance. So I took a leap of faith. I really had no idea what I was doing, but I heard it was a good career, so we know all about insurance. And uh, I started this up, and I, I was working with Farmers until 2016 when I decided to be an independent broker. So I went off on my own, another leap of faith, went for it. Uh, great, stable career, really enjoyed it, had a lot of success, had a lot of fun. Uh, along the way, I did start a few other companies too, and I actually bought a property management company, a real estate company. I worked there for a while from someone that was retiring, basically automated everything, made it really efficient, and I was able to sell that too for, for a decent, uh, decent sale. And so we worked out pretty well with that. I also was flipping homes at the time too, flipping condos, and I actually started my own construction, uh, building, building homes too, subdividing plots and lands and everything going forward. So I did a lot of different stuff. I just realized it wasn't all for me at that point too. So. Uh, for about 10 years, my wife and I were doing martial arts as well. We were doing Taekwondo. And it came to that point where we're like, you know, let's open our own martial arts studio. Why not? This is trying. <clears throat> so my wife and I went into business, and we opened a martial arts studio. And honestly, it was a great outlet for the energy that I had, you know, all the things going on. And we started that, and I was working directly with the community, working directly with kids, seeing all the people come up. And it was so much fun. I really, really enjoyed it until my body told me it wasn't time. We couldn't do this anymore. And so actually, I had my left hip replaced first, and it was one of those things, you know, you know it's coming, but uh, my wife did her best to, to run the studio as best we could. Uh, it's hard, obviously, to be at home. And uh, when uh, I came back and found me, hey, let's do a good push, we'll do this, we'll make it work, it'll be great, my right hip started going. And so I had to get my second hip replaced on my right side. And then we thought, you know, it's been five years, it's been good, it's been happy, time to shut it down. And so we actually, we actually closed our martial arts studio and the timing it was working well, uh, because actually five months later, we would have found out that COVID hit. And we would probably have been shut down anyway. And a lot of people know about that kind of going forward. So we were lucky, and it was Tiger Rock Martial Arts off Cedar Bluff. They're still here. Amy in the back is the owner back there. So uh, her husband and me actually used to spar a lot at matches. I, I wouldn't spar her, because obviously she's an adult female, and I'm an adult male, and I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but so basically, him and I would talk, and that kind of moves forward where the rest of our story was when the California government decided to close the schools. My family had enough, okay, the actual schools. My daughter, myself, and my wife said, you know what, it's, let's go on a trip. Schools are closed anyway, let's drive a motorhome. Strip a motorhome, 
all around the country in 26 different states. We started in Southern California into the Dakotas, over to Minnesota, down in Iowa, the heartland and all that. And we came across Florida and we said, you know what? We know Josh and Amy. Let's go swing by Knox County. So we came here and basically they showed us around for a few days and drove us around. They showed us the river, the lake, they showed us everything, they had all these wonderful treasures. And we were looking at the pros and cons of every city or city or county or state we had been to and said, you know what? These are adding up pretty good. So we got back in the car, went down to South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, back across Florida, and we said, you know what? Jeez. Let's stop one more time. Let's go check it out in Knox County. And so then we did a couple days there, and then we went back, and basically within that month, we literally got back from our trip, and we said, we're done. We're done here. We're out. We need to leave. We're going to leave now. Within 30 days, we had sold our house, packed up everything we had, and we got my daughter here to start school junior year here at Kirk High School. It was that quick that we were that fast. And we knew where we wanted to be. So it is no secret. I am not from here. I did not grow up here. I didn't go to UT as much as I would maybe like to. But I don't ever want to see this place lose the attraction that brought me here. This is a safe community. It has values. It values family. And a community that wants to provide children with the opportunity for great education. So a place where we can still develop here, we have common sense plans to build around our infrastructure. And we need to get the best teachers and the best first responders here. And we need to pay those people enough that they stay here in our community. We need to fight to make sure our senior citizens and our veterans get the benefits that they fought for and that they deserve. And finally, a community that fights to keep taxes low and wages on the rise so we can attract jobs, but not just any job. We need good, stable, high-paying jobs here. And we need to bring them in. So bringing us to why I want to be District 5 County Commissioner, I have obviously seen what government overreach can do. I have seen how they can kill economy. I have seen firsthand what the Democrats continue to grab and what can happen when they start to grab more seats and eventually create an unchecked authority. They, they make it sound warm and fuzzy when you go to the college students and you start telling them, hey, this is great, this is how it could be. And I tell you, they're really slowly killing the fabric of our community right here. And by living in other areas, I've seen unchecked government, what they can do, and I've seen them write checks, blank checks, and use good taxpayer money in bad programs. So in the time frame that I've been here, I've already seen a shift in the community. There's a well-organized, highly paid or well-funded Democrat party that took over Knoxville. The November 7th election shows exactly why the Republicans can't be complacent and expect to continue winning in the elections. The good old boy network isn't gonna have the success, and I don't wanna wake up in 10 years and wonder what happened to our community. So Farragut is about 65% Republican, but if we sit back in our laurels and we don't go to the polls and vote, the silence and complacency needs to stop because that is consent. So Republicans must have their voices heard and they must vote and we must stop the mental illness that is coming into our schools. If you don't think it could happen here or you don't think it's already happening here, you're wrong, because it is. And we need to make sure that we combat the bad policies to protect our future of our kids. So in the hierarchy of the United States, the people are above the government. The government serves the people and we should best not get that mixed up. So we need to help our teachers by encouraging the support of their parents, we need to help uplift the students and not dumb down their curriculum, what's happening right now in other places. We need to teach them that opinions are not as important as facts. And we need to put an emphasis on basic skills to better prepare a person for life because not all of our kids are going to be TikTok stars. So. <laughs> and what, and a big surprise, I know. For those that are raising those kids, they're not going to be stars. So, but I also want to make sure, make sure that our, our safe our communities are secure and empower the law enforcement. Give them the tools and the pay they deserve so they can do a good job. Keep the criminals off the streets and basically let this place be as protected as we possibly can. But I say the best part for last, and that was mentioned earlier, but the big, biggest problem I hear when I'm door knocking is infrastructure. What are we going to do with that? Obviously, I have my own ideas. I've been working with people already, meeting with several people. A lot of appointments coming up. We're going to put a plan together and we're going to make this happen. We're going to make our traffic flow. So this country is built on the principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I've never worked for the government, and I've certainly paid them enough in taxes. Being a business owner and an entrepreneur, I've experienced the stress and the struggle of having to sign someone else's paycheck, knowing there would not be enough money for me. So personally, and I, I'm really not into politics. I'm not in special interest. I don't know. I have a long-time alliance, or I've never made promises from the past. I won't have to recluse myself from certain votes because of my job or my self-interest. And District 5 values cannot be bought. Our, our culture here cannot be changed, and our beliefs don't waver from the newest fad. But I need your vote on March 5th. I need your friends' vote, your family's vote, your neighbor's vote. 
because we need to we need to send a message to all our opposing party that District Five is a stronghold of conservative and Republican values. I will take 100% of my experience and my knowledge to help District Five remain as beautiful as the day that I moved here. So yes, I am asking for your vote. And in closing, I want to say Merry Christmas and God bless you. I appreciate it.